visual arts are art forms such as drawing, painting, sculpture, and more. This week on Cameo, we take a glimpse at visual artists. Fresh off her art exhibition, Liberated, new artist Carrie Miller opens up about her new journey. I am Carrie Miller. I'm a newly launched artist that has created over 20 pieces of prolific art expressions. My medium of choice is pencil and charcoal as I believe they show exactly what I want to portray in every single piece that I do. I love the black effect because it speaks true to me, true to myself, as it is very deliberate and it is very precise. I can go really soft and subtle or I can go really bold and intense. First, I should tell you that I, I have been drawing all my life, from I was born. And um, when I started my career as an executive assistant, I, I abandoned my art for a while. Um, actually, for about almost 10 years now. I was recently inspired and my whole passion for art got reignited. And so over about three or four months, Everything that was suppressed for a while just poured out of me. All of these pieces that you're looking at are from experiences. They're from deep down in my heart. They mean everything to me. They're not just drawings, but they're prolific expressions. I can tell you that, for example, I want you. I want you means a lot to me. Very sensual, it's very sexy. It shows the body of a man and a woman. and. The human form is one of my favorite images to draw because it just shows exactly how the body can appeal to the eye, basically. I might be somewhere that basically I'm inspired by the uniqueness of something. I might see a photograph somewhere or I might see kids playing somewhere. And in my head, it takes me back to where I'm from. And then for me to really put it on paper is really for me to take what I've just seen and combine it with my experiences to create an expression of myself. I think black and white is so beautiful. Black being my favorite color. Mm -hmm. And how the two comes together the light and the dark to create something so unique. You know, it's not a painting, but it allows people to really look deep within it and to really say, wow. You know, it's not a painting, but it has the same appeal. I think that is very creative and I think it appeals to people, not just the black and white, but the images that are portrayed. It's a challenge to price art, first and foremost. For any artist, I think when they put something on paper or canvas, it's because it means something to them. And that doesn't necessarily translate to the same image meaning something to somebody else, right? So firstly, I really look at how much this piece means to me. Then I look at the amount of work I put in it, right? And then you know, it, 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 it can be very detailed or it can be a huge piece that really doesn't require that, that really doesn't um, require that much detail. 
And so, I mean, to price it, it really comes from all of that. And plus, you don't really want to come off being too expensive. You know, you want to be, you want to price your work reasonably enough so that people can appreciate it but still can afford to buy it. The first challenge so far is being a new person on the scene, a new artist on the scene. It's really getting people to pay attention, really getting people to spend the time to come to your shows, to be inspired by the work that you put out. That is the very, very first um, challenge. Second challenge I've had is really getting the art supplies. Um, it, it is challenging getting it here locally, and so all of my charcoal and, and all the pieces that I use, really, I have to source them overseas. Um, so if they were available locally, then it would really help me out a lot in terms of pricing and everything. Um, third challenge is really the inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, the time and the inspiration, because um, this is not you know my only job I have another job and really to find the time because art is something that you have to spend time to really think about it and to be inspired enough to do it so time is just um, one of the other challenges that I have welcome to liberated by yours truly Carrie Miller being liberated I mean that's my tagline and I'll always use it because I have suppressed this for a long time. So just the fact of sharing this with the world is a huge, huge accomplishment for me. People purchasing my work and asking me to be involved in other art shows, that's another huge accomplishment. You know, from not sharing to people actually asking you to be a part of the show, that is another huge deal for me. Self-empowerment, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a woman mm -hmm. and um, female artists, I believe, don't get that much recognition. They don't get the recognition they deserve. Mm -hmm. And not just in terms of my art, but just the fact that I decided to carry out my lifelong dream. Mm -hmm. I would love to empower other women to never ever give up, never ever settle, mm -hmm. but to always aim for the stars and do the best that they can in everything that they do. I want my pieces to be to be displayed, you know, in, in the art world for people to really see the value and to really to appreciate it. It would really mean a lot to me. And that is really where I'm headed right now to get my pieces globally. The creative process is one of those things that I don't even think about much. You know, it's, it's like breathing. You know, you don't think about breathing. It's one of those things that you get up and you, you, know, you, just, you just have to partake in. I have my studio next to my bedroom, so everything is just one. Most of my time is spent in the studio. I'm influenced by, by basically everything, mostly social issues, being a male, you know, in Jamaica, after being introduced and explore other areas of the world, you know, you want to sort of create a, a legacy in the area that you're from. So you sort of, you know, develop ideas, imagery along that line, you know, images that associate with, with you, you know, opposed to pulling something from another culture and highlighting that specific, but rather pulling something from another culture and putting your intake into it. Edna Manley graduate Kimani Beckford talks to us about his creative process and challenges. Well, the piece behind me is from a series, you know, titled, you know, B.I.B., which means Black is Beautiful. In that time period, I was working on a series of portraits where I was looking at, you know, the idea of, you know, my peers, somebody that I see myself in. All these images are a person that I know personally whether it's a family member or a close friend, mm -hmm. you know, and I see them as, as self-portrait. I can relate to them, you know, being considered as a black person. And being considered as a, as a black person, 
you know, and then going through institutions or, and meeting persons, you know, where, you know, there's stigma about anything black is not good. So being a person who is associated with black and identify as black, then I'm, you know, I'm questioning why isn't black beautiful? You know, why isn't black good? Then that means I'm not good. Looking into other cultures where there are iconic images and then I don't see myself in those iconic posture, iconic places, then as an artist, you know, being able to make my voice, you know, being introduced to the art history, I want to sort of create and leave a, a legacy by, you know, putting these black images and, you know, black in a literal sense. This piece is another one from that series, the BIB Portraits. And what is most for me interesting about this piece is that this piece was one of those pieces that affect persons more. This piece was in the Brazil Biennial. It, it got some, some sort of critical review, which kind of, you know, kind of make me smile. Because doing this piece, I never knew that it would create so much dimension in terms of dialogue. You know, when I sent off this piece to Brazil for the Biennial, being from Jamaica, sending a piece representing the country, but it started to create a more critical dialogue where I had, you know, institution writing about it. It's very, you know, somewhat successful, you know, after being in the studio, you know, producing and knowing that, you know, the work doesn't only stands in Jamaica, but it goes on the international scene and, you know, getting some international reviews. So I was, I was very happy about this piece. Persons ask me every day, you know, what do you do? And I say, basically, my life surrounds art. You know, I breathe, I eat art. As I said before, my studio is next to my bedroom. It's not only what you do in the studio, but, you know, what you do outside the studio. You know, it's, it's a way how you present yourself. You know, and there's this cliche way of, you know, art is supposed to be raggedy. You know, wear dirty clothes, wear tear clothes, but it's, it's a way of, of seeing things differently, you know. I might pass a building and I don't just see it as a building. I see it as a, as a cultural asset. And in Jamaica, there, there's, there's not much really to, to pull from, you know, in terms of culture. So I want to be the person who had to that cultural legacy of the, of, of the country. In Jamaica, you know, we don't expose or have the high appreciation for art as we should. It, it would be good if there were more grants, you know, and more respect for the arts, you know, more involvement. The challenges I face are, you know, material, you know, we're in Jamaica, which is just an, a small area, you know, we're kind of limited to a lot of materials and the, which are on the, you know, larger scale. You know, there are some stuff that I would want to ship in the country to engage, you know, my practice more, but it's kind of limited. So, you know, those are some of the challenges, you know, financial challenges, which kind of surrounds most principles and career, you know, um, material, um, gallery spaces, because most of artists nowadays, you know, they, they're, they're producing, but there's, there isn't enough space to display the creative, the, the, end, the end product. So, you know, it, it would be good to have more gallery spaces, you know, and more involvement, you know, the corporate involvement into the art. First, there need to be somewhat more involvement into the culture. You know, there's limited access where persons appreciate culture. First, we have to, we have to kind of sort of, you know, understand the importance of culture. And in that way, persons will engage in art on a different level where it's, it's, and it's not even so much about a, a, a gallery space because we don't necessarily need a gallery space to display the art because that's just one principle, you know. There, you, you know, you have the drama, you have the visual arts, you have the dance, you, know, you, have, you have other principles. Call note to the persons that are, you know, somewhat more financial stable to just, you know, give in to the creative process, give us a space you know, not necessarily a, you know, a, a four kind of box piece, 
But if you, if you, if you go around Jamaica, you know, there's, there isn't much sculpture. You know what I mean? And you know, we need, you know, we need some, some, some more of these involvement to kind of, you know, bring up the culture. We need to start restore the buildings. You know, if you go to Spanish Town, Spanish Town is just a, a fantastic, fantastic area. You know, restore, restore that. Restore that, you know, you know, your Port Royal, restore that. So we can get more of our culture, you know, on the mainstream. I don't focus much on the financial side in terms of the outcome of the art. I am more into the creative process. So this is where I leave, you know, the, the most of the, the you know, the, the business aspect to like the galleries and stuff. But to answer the question directly, you know, it is a lucrative business, you know, and and it it it's it's not as much as a, as how it should be. But it, it, it is, it is, and it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky, tricky question, you know what I mean? Because, you know, art has, has, has always been seen as, you know, you, know it, you, you don't make money off art, you know, you go to art school, you come out, most persons divert into different aspects, different careers, and then, you know, there's just like one out of five persons who is really involved in practicing art. But, but yes, Art, art is a lucrative, you know, you can make money off art. What can be done to improve, you know, and expand is creating, creating an a, a institution or a space where all the arts can, you know, overlap in each other. I mean, you have the Enamali College where you have, you know, more than one disciplines, but they are still separated, you know, in my views, you know, but Outside of that, if you can have like festivals where you know all the arts can combine, you can have the, the, the writer, you know, dialoguing with the painter, the painter with the drama. So, creating a a a, a, a sort of you know you know like a, a, a group where everybody you know can relate to each other, I think that that can expand and improve. In the future, I hope to have a bigger studio so I can you know engage myself more because I, I think that I'm limited to the space that I'm in. And hopefully I will be able to, you know, overthrow that barriers, that barriers that, you know, because there's a lot of equipment and material that I want to get into the country so I can expand more. And I can, I can be at the same pace, you know, with the other artists that are, that are you know, engaging themselves more on the other side of the world because they're, they're, there's no limitation to materials, you know what I mean? So, Hopefully, I'll be able to import more stuff in the country or I'll be able to go out of the country. The style of art that I create is a mix of realism and it becomes sometimes abstracted as well. So most of the works I do are paintings. I work mainly in the medium of oils. So I work a lot with oils on canvas. I also do drawings in charcoal and paper. And my most recent works, I am um, exploring sculptures using mixed media materials to create these pieces. We caught up with fine artist and educator Alicia Brown on set of her first solo exhibit at Studio 174. The piece that is displayed here is a part of a series that is currently in a solo show that I'm having here at Studio 174. So the title of the show is Copy and Placed. It focuses on issues of cultural identity, how we form this identity, the different things that impact on getting to the point of trying to understand yourself, trying to, to place yourself, especially in a Caribbean setting where, for the most part, we feel displaced. So what I'm doing is referencing history. I'm referencing not just the cultural history of Jamaica, but I'm also referencing the history of, of art. Because as an artist, I'm trying to place myself in that um, space as well. 
So some of the pieces are influenced by the culture of Jamaica, just the lifestyle of people. Um, I'm talking about different social issues having to do with um, our sense of belonging in terms of class structure. So the piece that's behind me is referencing John Kuno and just thinking about the whole idea of how or what John Kuno was about at the time and then kind of incorporating it into a modern space now. So I'm taking, for instance, the setting of women who are getting their hair done on the streets of Kingston in Kingston and kind of juxtaposing it with the history of John Kuno and what it is that was involved in, um, in the idea of John Kuno where, you know, when the um, enslaved Africans got some free time during the Christmas um, season, they would dress like their, their owners, their slave owners at the time. So it's, it's about mimicking, it's about imitating and taking different things from different cultures and trying to juxtapose and incorporate it into um, the culture of Jamaica now. How do we see ourselves again? You know, this whole idea of taking on a different facade and changing how we look and using um, things that we can all relate to. For instance, hair. Hair is a very um, political thing. It can mean different things for different um, reasons and for different cultures. So in these pieces, or in some of the pieces where I'm using here, I'm using the hair to critique society. Again, to talk about the division in terms of class, how we change ourselves just to feel like we belong in a, per in a particular space. I was trying to make a connection to, to that European space and trying to link it to the stories that we have been told about our history, our background, the influence of Europe on um, the culture of Jamaica how it aids in forming our identity as well, and trying to figure out where I belong in that conversation. So I use persons from Caucasian background, Chinese background, just to add to, to the conversation. The process of creating any one of these pieces, they tend to start in different ways. But for the most part, what I will do, if I get an idea, then I make a sketch of it. No, the sketch can be very small, it can be a large sketch. Um, just trying to map out, you know, the composition, different technical aspects of the drawing. So before I paint, normally I draw first. And then this drawing is transferred on the canvas, or sometimes I draw directly on the canvas, right? So you have techniques that we call direct or indirect. That's one way of beginning the pieces. Sometimes I just go straight ahead and just create a piece. So sometimes I'm working intuitively, sometimes I sit down and I, I try to map out everything before I start. If I'm really excited about an idea, then of course I'm going to complete it faster. Again, it depends on the technicality of the painting. So the piece behind me, it has a lot of figures in there. I'm thinking about the proportion of each figure. I'm thinking about the composition. I'm thinking about a lot of things when I'm working on a piece like this. So, of course, it tends to take more time. So I started this piece in 2014, and I completed it in 2016, with some break in between, of course. Again, I could start a piece um, today and then complete it by the end of the week. Getting the resources to, to create the pieces. Um, they're talking about transporting the pieces. Uh, exposure as well, right? So I'm very grateful for this medium. There are other challenges that will come about, but they are not as, um, should I say, they are not as important. Teaching for me is a very important way. It, well, not just an important way, but it's a tool that I can use to impart information and the knowledge that I'm gaining. I'm trying to, of course, develop the arts as well. 
But it's also very important as well because that's what keeps me going in terms of financial wise because the reality is that I don't know of any artists who can just survive off their art in Jamaica. And we have the same issues in countries abroad too. And I just want to make more art. I want to get some exposure in some museums, some art museums just continue what it is that I'm doing here and growing and being able to share it. And that's it this week for Cameo. Even in the midst of our challenges, our creative industries continue to shine. I've been your host, Amita Pasad Webb.